do. So for a problem like this, um, you guys didn't have to answer the first three questions, but on your homework you did. So let's just go and practice this again. Uh, first of all, end behavior for this one is going to be falls left, rises right. So you could say the graph falls left, and we could say it rises right. Now, you didn't have to do this for this problem, so I'm just going to leave it like that. However, for your homework, you should know how to do it the more algebraic way, which I explained last time. Um, the next one is determine if it's an odd or an even degree. So we look at the number of zeros. We have one, two, three zeros. So therefore, we know that this has to be a odd degree, polynomial. Then C, we know that there's three zeros. Now, for the next thing, we have to talk about a little bit more about um, what's going on with the function. So for D, it asks us to determine the smallest degree of the function. So we actually need to figure out what the number is of the degree, the smallest number that our degree could be. So remember, if you guys remember, we talked about turning points last class period, right? The turning points. And what we said was the number of turning points of a graph, let's say we have a degree of n. So if my degree is n, some number, that means the number of turning points, Ashley, is n minus 1. Do you guys remember talking about that? And remember, the turning points is where the graph either increases, then decreases, or is in decreasing, then goes to increasing. So in my example, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 turning points. 1, 2, 3, 4 turning points. At each sense, I have 4 turning points. So therefore, my turning points is equal to 4. What would you guys then say my degree is going to be? Well, hold on. If the degree is n and your number of turning points is n minus 1, I now give you the number of turning points, which is n minus 1. So the number of degrees is going to be 5. So you can say for this example, your minimum degree has to be 5. It's going to be at least 5. Does that kind of make sense? Because then if your degree is 5, n mi 5 minus 1 is 4, which is your turning point. Make sense? All right. So that was D. Then it says E, determine the domain and range. All right, so here's always the fun one, right? So when dealing with the domain and range, um, remember, guys, domain is going to be the set of all x values that you can plug into your function um, that will be a part of the function. So we look at this, ladies and gentlemen. And first of all, let's just look from the interval of here to here. Is this one thing a continuous graph? Yes, it's a continuous graph, right? There's no breaks or blocks or anything like that. If I pick any one of these x points for any one of these intervals, am I going to have a point on the graph? Yeah. x equals negative 1, here. x equals 2, here. Negative 3, here. Negative 4, there. Right? For every x value I pick, I'm going to have a point on the graph, right? Now, is that pattern going to continue as I go to the right? And as I go to the left, are we always going to have a point for an, x, for an x value, no matter what x value I pick? Yeah, because there's no breaks in the graph. And this graph is going to continue keep on getting wider. And this graph is going to continue that way getting wider. So there's always going to be an x value. So what I like to write to Misha is I like to write my domain is going to be all the values that are going to be between negative infinity and infinity. Because I can pick any value from negative infinity to infinity. And it will be a part of this graph. It will have a y coordinate. It will have another point on the graph. It will have an output value. Now let's go and take a look at the range. So Zach, when the range is dealing with all of the outputs of your graph. So no matter what number you plug in, can you get any sort of output? Can we go all the way up to infinity and all the way down to infinity for this graph? And the answer is yes. It's a continuous graph, and it's going down to negative infinity, and it's going up to positive infinity. So you can see your range is also from negative infinity to infinity. All right? And the last thing it says, find the relative max and min. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to find the relative max and min, remember, whenever you have a point that's going from when your graph is going increasing, down, back down to greasing, those are turning points, which we call our relative max. So we have two of them, here and there. Then we look at our relative minimum. 
which is going to be when our graph is going down decreasing and then turns back up to increasing. And these are going to be to your relative minimal points. Okay, That's all you guys had to do for each one of your homework questions, uh, which was on page 71, 19 through 21.